Uncharted Golden Abyss is a masterpiece. It has some drawbacks that make it maybe not deserve the title of a masterpiece, but for me, this game is one I would replay anytime. Don't consider this iteration just a portable version of Uncharted, because the game deserves way more credit than that. It's as good as the other Uncharted games. No, yeah, for a handheld. Nope. I consider this game as good as the rest. No buts. Even the length is close. It takes you around 10 hours to finish the game. It's close to Uncharted 1 in length. The graphics are almost up to par with the PS3. Oh, and by the way, what you see now in this recording isn't a full representation of what you're going to see if you play the game on a Vita. The OLED screen makes all the colors you see now more vibrant, making the already great graphics look stunning. Gameplay wise, you get everything you would expect from an Uncharted game. The platforming, the gunning, you even get the same icons, weapons and combat mechanics from the other games. You get puzzles, in short, you get the entire Uncharted formula. Also the game uses the Vita to your advantage in combat. Touchscreen commands are helpful, you can play the game like in the original fashion, but you can also use the touchscreen and touchpad to make things easier for you. You can also fine tune your aim by tilting your console. This is a nice feature only if you play the game at home, because on a bumpy car ride you will get your aim ruined if you tilt your console. But luckily you have the option to turn the feature off, so it's all good. But if you want, you can enhance your experience by this. And if or when it bothers you, you can turn the extras off to play it like the normal Uncharted. Though, I really recommend you to play it with the gyroscope option on. It's really helpful. But other integrations of the Vita's mechanics aren't that fun. They're interesting, but not really that fun. For example here, I had to hold my Vita's camera in a bright light. It's cool, but it ain't so cool if you don't have a bright light by you. And since you probably want a Vita for the portability, you are going to play the game on the road, most probably. So imagine pulling out your flashlight to hold your Vita in your phone's light, or in a light bulb, I mean the mechanic is original, but it makes the gameplay more difficult when you're on the road. But luckily, this happens only once in the whole game. And unfortunately, you get other small annoyances too because they wanted to integrate as much Vita specific stuff as they could. So turning objects around is annoying at first but you get used to it. The balancing minigame is kind of annoying but most of the time the Vita specific stuff is okay. You get for example charcoal puzzles where you have to draw with charcoal. You have to draw with your finger on the touchscreen and other puzzles or puzzle-like stuff that is actually okay. Also, as much as I praise the graphics and the attention to detail, there are also some things that would have needed more attention, in my opinion. Like for example the shining collectibles during cutscenes. They are annoying. Or the animation where enemies fall. It looks kinda cheap. I mean, they use motion capture for the cutscenes. So motion capture or at least ragdoll physics for the enemies during combat would have been nice instead of how the animations turned out in the game. They aren't terrible but they could have been better. But I have to admit that some minor details are impressive. Like for example if you get into water, Nate's clothes will get wet. Also the atmosphere in the game is top notch. The story is well written and it keeps you hooked. Cutscenes have motion captures, which makes the storytelling a feast, as the animations don't seem robotic, since actual actors moved in that way. The voice acting is also top notch, and the music is amazing. It's very fitting to the game and very epic. Actually, there are moments when the music is so good, you, you just savor the moment to the fullest. Also a small detail I've noticed about the music is that each level has specific tracks. And the more you progress in the story, the more intense the music gets. And this creates an atmosphere I want to replay. Overall, the game is a masterpiece. 
there are some minor inconveniences, but they get so rare that you start enjoying the game to the fullest anyway. This is a review, I have to address the good and the bad, but just know that the minor drawbacks I've listed are really minor. The drawbacks are nitpicks. I mean, calling out stuff like for example that you can't bend plants like on PS3 and that instead of budging them and having an animation when Nate crosses them, they just have an invisible barrier. Or the minigame with the light, which is indeed annoying if you don't have a light bio. It happens only once in the whole 10 hour gameplay. 30 hours if you want to finish the game with all the collectibles hidden in the map. I would incline to give the game a perfect 10, but considering that I call some flaws, let's give it a 9 or 9.5, but remember that these are just numbers, because in spite of the small nitpicks, in my heart, this game is a 10, and I will replay it countless of times from now on. Ok, so this was the video, if you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe, if you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section, you will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord, and if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.